Liam Lawson has been left dry by Red Bull after being promised a seat for 2025 in either one of the two teams, and effectively ending up having to search for his own spot after the Austrian team have renewed their contracts with Perez and Ricardo. Obviously, being a 22-year-old with such a great five-race stint in one of the worst teams on the grid at the time bodes well for a driver like Lawson, and the other teams are now taking note as to what's happening between these two parties, with Marco admitting that there's a clause in Lawson's contract that could release him out of his duties with Red Bull. Could we see him drive somewhere else, and is this something that Red Bull would regret further down the road? It's safe to say that Liam Lawson is probably one of the most disappointed drivers in the moment because, despite all of the hype that's been built around him, with high-profile Red Bull members going publicly to promise him a seat from 2025 onwards, he's now without one in the Austrian team's family and is forced to look elsewhere. Helmut Marko spoke about the future of the Racing Bulls before the important meeting that was held with the Milton Keynes Bay squad, and it seems like the narrative has changed quite quickly. From being a team that wants to race with young drivers, as was the reported wish of the shareholders, to one that hasn't changed anything in its approach despite the results not being nearly what they wanted them to be, as the projections before the beginning of the season were quite high, Racing Bulls are now in a very dangerous situation of losing a potential superstar of a driver who boded extremely well against Sonoda in that five-race stint in 2023. And picture this. You're Liam Lawson. You get called out of nowhere to replace Ricardo for a period of races and you don't even know how long it will last. And while expected to just drive and not crash the car, you manage to finish P9 in Singapore and set the best results of an Alpha Tari driver at the time. Pretty good for a future full-time F1 driver, right? But not if you're in Red Bull, because here, the actions that are happening within the team are quite confusing to everyone. By extending the contract of Perez, the driver who scored only 28 points in the last eight races and is now closer to Behrman in the Drivers' Championship, who drove only one race in Jeddah and finished P6 than his teammate Verstappen, Red Bull have been under a lot of scrutiny lately for their actions. According to F1 Insider, even the Verstappen family was surprised that the contract of Perez was continued because, before the meeting, they were told that Max will have a new teammate in the next 10 races of 2024. But both Horner and Marco gave clear statements that when it comes to the driver's choice, Perez and Ricardo are drivers of Red Bull, and the goal will be to give Perez a car that he could adapt more to, rather than just put a driver out there who would adapt to the car and deliver much better results than him. It's pretty paradoxical, and the side that's hurt the most in this entire scenario is Lawson, no question about that. But according to Marco, the cards will be shuffled again for 2025, which does give Lawson a little bit of hope, even though it's nothing that he could rely his career on, considering at which direction it's been going recently with Red Bull giving public promises that they haven't kept. Nobody expected Perez to be fighting with Verstappen up front, especially when the RB20 has started to downgrade at a rapid speed, but if we were to look at this graph, we'd understand that almost any driver out there would do better than the Mexican driver right now. In the first seven races of the season, Perez scored 107 points, while Verstappen scored 161, which is more or less a valid difference considering that Verstappen was in a league of his own and Perez was a consistent podium challenger. But from round 8 to round 14, Perez managed to score only 24 points, which is one of the lowest amounts of points that have been scored by any driver on the grid, let alone a driver who had arguably the best car for quite some time as shown during the Spa's qualifications. Perez is also the only driver on the grid to not have led a lap in the race, and the only driver on the grid in the top 8 to not have won one, and the fact that he is P7 and not P8 is only because Russell got disqualified from Spa because he had an underweight car. I know that maybe Lawson replacing Perez would have been a bit too big of a bite for the Kiwi driver, but a promotion in which Ricardo or Sonoda would have had a shot at that second seat in RB20 whereas Lawson would have crafted his talent in racing bulls could have been a perfect scenario for Red Bull. Even if their superstar Verstappen decides that their car is no longer the most dominant one and he might change scenery for Mercedes. This is something that will definitely turn out to be a huge question point in the Red Bull's future, especially now that they have so much on their minds with whether or not they will be able to fix the car and focus solely on the driver's championship. Because by continuing the collaboration with Perez, they have effectively given up the first place, and maybe even the second or third, because both Ferrari and Mercedes have drivers who are finishing high in the points weekend after weekend. One thing doesn't bode well with everything that's happening within the team, and that's the promises that they've been making, but nothing has been fulfilled just yet. 
For example, when Lawson had the opportunity to have a talk with some of the teams that were offering him seats in 2024, such as Williams, Horner went on to publicly say that there's absolutely no need for the Kiwi driver to do so, because it's just for one year that he'll be unemployed in Red Bull. When Horner started to cool down a little bit on the entire Lawson hype, despite the bad results of Ricardo in Racing Bulls, Marco reignited the spike by saying that Racing Bull shareholders have said their own thoughts, and that is the fact that the team needs to have two young drivers, and that second seat will belong to Liam Lawson. The Kiwi driver was even given a Silverstone Pirelli test just like Ricardo was back at the time when he got back in with the team that started it all in his career. And even though the results were impressive and he was supposed to measure himself against Ricardo as to who would replace Perez in Red Bull, an even bigger step in Lawson's career, now that scenario is out of the window. Red Bull has chosen money and sponsorship, as well as marketing value over talent. And while Lawson is definitely lacking technical knowledge compared to Ricardo in terms of what the car needs and what it doesn't, that can be fixed quite quickly if the team is willing to be patient and invest in time a little bit. Now there's another team that could capitalize on this entire situation and that is Audi. Obviously the German squad has signed Hülkenberg as their lead veteran driver, and if they do want a young force that wants to prove the entire F1 world that he's exactly who he shows to be in that five race stint in 2023, then Lawson is the right choice. Nothing fuels a driver more than a wish to prove himself in another squad, and we've seen how well Gasly and Albon have performed once they've been dropped out of the Red Bull camp which, by the way, were much better results compared to what atrocity Perez is doing right now with the Austrian team, and it still gets to keep the seat. There's also been lots of talks from the manager of Lawson that he would have gotten the Red Bull or Racing Bull seat in 2025, but even Marco went on to deny these rumours, and now that it's confirmed that Ricardo would remain in that seat, it would be more than interesting to see how things would form up in Red Bull now that they don't have the most dominant car on the grid. The RB20 is definitely out of its optimal window, and Verstappen finishing P5 in two consecutive races, despite picking up a 10-place grid penalty in Spa, which he's done so in 2022 and 2023, and went on to win both of these races, is a clear indicator that something is wrong with the car. This has also been one of the primary topics to discuss at the meeting that sealed Lawson's fate with Red Bull's family, and it's quite evident that he would be looking to activate the clause at the first opportunity possible. As of now, apart from Audi, Alpine might be an interesting project for him too. Even though Alpine have two very interesting choices in Duhan and Schumacher, especially with Jack, as they've learned from their mistakes with Piastri and they wouldn't want to give a finished product to another team, there's a slight chance that they might show interest in Lawson. These things are done through tests, and if Lawson manages to absolutely outperform these candidates, if of course given a proper chance, then he might be hoping that he, along with Gasly, will be the leading forces of the revolution and reconstruction that Alpine is undergoing right now. With all of this in mind, do you think that Lawson has been done dirty by Red Bull? And more importantly, do you think that a new order will be set in 2025, where the drivers will be reassessed again, with possibly a much better scenario coming out for the Kiwi driver? Let us know in the comments below, and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.